Hey there, Crystal Covington here, founder of Women of Denver, chatting with one of our members, Liz Windish, who is a financial planner at Aspen Wealth Management. I want to um, first start off by letting you give, give us a little bit about your background and tell us how you got into this career field. And then I'm gonna dive into some industry stuff. So let's start by just giving an introduction. You mentioned I am Liz Windish. I'm a certified financial planner. Um, I have been for over 16 years. Um, and my journey there started with a desire to help women. Um, it, was a, it was a career change for me, um, but finance had always been um, a personal interest of mine. So I found I was always helping friends and family, um, you know, figure out how their 401k works, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. It made me realize how many incredibly bright, really successful women and they were successful in their careers, but they were very intimidated by their own finances. Yeah. Um, and I just really saw a need there and a desire to specifically help women kind of merge those two. Nice. Yeah, I remember working in the financial industry and it was like this big industry thing. It was like a whole thing to say, you know what, we should start marketing and talking to women. <laughs> I think women make financial decisions and people were like, oh my goodness, maybe they do. We should do, we had this whole program wrapped around it. I'm like, wow, this is a, I'm really surprised that this is. It's, yes, I know, shocking. Women have money and make financial yeah. decisions. I know. I know we've got a really new program that it's women. Yeah. <laughs> there a little bit. We've made progress, but not enough as far as I'm concerned, but. Yes. So tell me a little bit about what you're observing right now. What are you seeing in the world, in the industry right now that is worth discussing? Well, I think that, you know, the, the pandemic um, has really, really shifted um, everyone's goals. Um, it's, it's forced us all to take a long, hard look at, you know, where our life is and what the world is going to be like. And where we want to put our resources, what's important to us. Um, so on a personal level, like with my clients specifically, um, I have noticed uh, more of a concentration on impact investing or um, socially responsible investing. Um, but just in general, I have noticed I've been getting so many more calls from people that are just realizing that they really need to put some plans in line with their goals with finances instead of just kind of going along and everything's fine and then throwing some money in savings but really taking a long hard look at what they want their life to look like um, i think this pandemic has really kind of thrown everyone in a different direction yeah i think it created reflection it said you know now something has happened now where you are now that something has happened and if you realize oh my gosh i wasn't really that prepared or this could happen again and I need to be better prepared the next time. My husband and I, we graduated college right in the middle of the first, uh, the 2008 financial crash. And so that was a really tough time to be around and we watched all of the adults. We didn't think of ourselves as adults yet, but we watched all of the real adults <laughs> struggling. Yeah, the actual grownups, you know, who had been adulting for quite some time and they were struggling, they were dealing with things. And so we always said to ourselves, the next time this happens, we're going to be better prepared. And this time around, we were better prepared. And now mm -hmm. we're thinking this time around, we're like, we need to be prepared for even more. So now we have more context and more information. We've mm -hmm. seen how these things work. And so um, you know, it kind of gave us more reflection to say, okay, we need income sources, additional income sources, you know, think we need to be thinking about now we know more things that collapse when economy collapses. And now we understand, you know, what kind of things that people still weren't prepared for even after the last one, you know, so. Well, think about that entire industries disappeared overnight. Yes. You know? That's something that we weren't necessarily planning for in our financial planning. Um, you know, yes, emergency savings was important, but yeah. that was thinking that um, aside from a personal tragedy, you know, you can get another job. But if your entire industry disappeared, yeah. it's, you know, yes, yes, we need to be prepared in a much, much different way. Yes. Um, and diversified in a much different way. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, I'm flexible. And like you said, multiple streams of income mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, different, different jobs, a job and a side job, whatever that looks like to you, rental properties. There's a lot of different ways to go, but it's, it's, you, know, you cannot count on anything. Unfortunately, I think we're all kind of realizing that. Yes. So tell me about one of your most uh, recent accomplishments and what makes you proud of that. Well, I think that's interesting that you mentioned the financial crisis of 08 and 09, um, because I think one of something that I'm really proud of is the difference in how my clients have reacted um, mm -hmm. that crisis versus this crisis. Um, at that time, people were much more concerned with, you know, what the stock market was doing every single day and the actual numbers in their 401k. Mm -hmm. And I have spent a lot of time over the last few years educating my clients on how global cycles work with the stock market. Now, I obviously did not anticipate the market was gonna go down because of a pandemic, um, but I have been telling clients that something like this would happen. So when it did happen, they weren't panicked. Like I guess right. we were just concentrating on other things like your job or your you know, emergency savings. Um, and I'm really proud that absolutely no one made any panic decisions. I was really able to keep everyone focused on their goals. Um, and it wasn't constantly putting out fires of clients calling you know, wanting to pull all their money. Um, it was much more long-term goal focused. Um, and I am really proud of that. Nice. That's a great, that is really great because we actually did, we were panicking. We were like, what do we do? What do we do? Because there's, you know, there's all, there's, you have your short-term money piles and your long-term money piles. And with the short-term money piles, it's like, what, what do we do with that? So, <laughs> Yeah. Those were hard decisions in this um, scenario, but it was very interesting to watch. Like I had, um, I had, well, we have several different, different things, but we had one that I pay a lot of attention to in particular, and it went down like, whoa, really bad. And then it went way back up, like more than it was. It's been, <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, I was like, so I watched the roller coaster completely I'd never really seen the roller coaster happen that fast and it was like a sad roller coaster where it was like oh I don't have any money there anymore and then it was like oh I have more than I had before how the heck did that happen? but I'm still sad because everything else is all messed up I know yeah. I love that I'm gonna steal that if you don't mind that it was a sad roller coaster it, that's yeah. a very apt description it's like yeah everything's back up again yeah <laughs> I'm not sure how to feel about that so tell me, so now that you've, you know, you talked a little bit about what, what you do and how you've supported people, there's going to be people that want to talk to you a little bit more, ask you some questions. How can they keep in touch and um, follow more information or get a consultation or just call you to say hello? Uh, yeah, uh, the best place to start is my website, uh, which is lizwindish.com. Uh, that sounds easy. easy. W-I-N-D-I-S-C-H. Um, and I um, have blog posts up there pretty frequently on, on kind of current events or things we might be thinking about. Um, but you can also schedule a consultation on my calendar right there through my website. Um, I'm happy to speak with any members, uh, just low-key consultation, any questions you might have about finances or retirement. Um, that's one of the things I really like about being a member of Women of Denver is how willing everyone is to collaborate and help each other out. And I want to be a part of that. So please feel free to reach out. Awesome. Thanks for that invitation. And thanks for that compliment. Um, so I appreciate you taking the time and I hope uh, folks got a lot out of, you know, hearing a little bit from you and I look forward to chatting with you some more. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Bye. Bye.